How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy. Now, as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons. And, folks, we're about to break down a player that very well can find themselves landing in Queens. As recent reports indicate, the New York Mets are among finalists for said player. And, yes, it is past midnight at the time of recording this, but the grind does not stop here at Wardy NYM. So don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on. It's greatly appreciated. But let's get into the report. As many of you know by now, it is the following from Mark Feinstein around 11, 16 p.m. Eastern. It appears Eric Eric Fetty's decision is coming down to the White Sox and Mets, per source. A deal expected to be in the two-year, $10 million range could be finalized by Tuesday. So there's a great chance that we're going to find out where Eric Fetty lands by the time you wake up, even by probably by time after I already wake up. So that's why we're doing the video and the breakdown now, especially in the scenario that the Mets land him. But yes, Mets fans, we all remember Eric Fetty, the longtime Washington national. That was anything but great during his time in DC and during his times and the bigs. However, over the past season in the KBO has certainly been a different pitcher that we're about to get into. But before we do, I want to know your initial reactions, comments, questions, and concerns down below. And of course, make, sh make sure to check out all the previous content. We were live tonight for our first edition of Mets Free Agent Frenzy Live Show, Winter Means Edition. I was accompanied by Jolly Olive, one of the best baseball YouTubers out there who is currently in attendance at Winter Meetings. Also was with Pat Regazzo, who's on the beat for the Mets, who does a fantastic job also in Nashville for Winter Meetings and got to hear their perspectives and all their insight on the Mets and baseball as a whole. Make sure to check out that live stream if you haven't already. But let's get into Eric Fetty. I know this is probably catching a lot of fans off guard and Trust me, me too. I was joking about it in my live show earlier, and now we find out that the Mets may very well find themselves landing this guy. So, okay, why would this make sense for the New York Mets, and why should Mets fans not to not want to jump off a cliff or something like that? And obviously, I'm being dramatic here, but if you look at how Twitter is going right now, fans definitely have their colorful opinions about this potential Eric Fetty pursuit, let alone actually going out of the way to land the guy. But as you see here from the numbers down below, they are interesting because in his one and only year there in Korea in the KBO, he was the best player in all the KBO in his position, as a matter of fact. 30 games played, roughly 200 innings, 2 ear ray, a 0 0.95 whip, a 2.38 FIP, 209 strikeouts for Fetty utilizing that arsenal that doesn't have overwhelming stuff whatsoever, but he ended up winning Cy Young and League MVP awards in his one and only year in the KBO, and now he's looking to sign with a team on a multi-year deal round $2 million total for $5 million AAV. And when you look at the career stat line for by Fetty, again, it leaves quite a bit to be desired. He first got his career started back in 2017 with the Nationals, and his season, his best season was back in 2020 in the shorting campaign with his 4.29 ear ray. His underlying numbers were never pretty. You know, he has a fastball, he has a change, he has a curveball, and he does have the cutter. And since then, he has really utilized that arsenal well to his advantage in the KBO. And while, yes, I understand concerns with bringing in someone like him i'm going to explain why this makes at least a level of sense for david stearns and this mets brass stearns came out over the past day and stated how the mets absolutely are going to be landing at least one more starter would like more than one but at minimum absolutely one Fetty, while he, of course, has been a starter his entire career, could be utilized beautifully by the Mets should they land him and have him in a six-man rotation, meaning that you are acquiring one of, if not both of, Yoshinobu Yamamoto or Shota Imanaga. Two guys that once they hit the States are likely going to need a six-man rotation the way that Kodai Senga did to first get acclimated in the bigs. And, of course, a six-man won't last necessarily all season long, but you're going to need it for a period of time. And this, this is where Eric Fetty, the type of player that he is, comes into play. Again, known for the nice off-speed breaking stuff that he has in his arsenal, not so much an overwhelming fastball, but you're getting someone that can eat quality innings for you and hopefully be a Trevor Williams 2.0. The Mets have been trying to find a guy like this since they left uh, let Trevor Williams go over the past year, and it has not worked in their favor with their current internal options. Fetty can be utilized in that swing man role, a six man role, especially if you do land a Yamamoto and or a Shota Imanaga, which is going to make that likelihood of needing a six man stronger. And there's been belief that the Mets will be signing starter type pitchers on shorter term either one or two year deals and Fetty comes into play here and again we've seen success with starting pitchers originally in the MLB struggling big time going to the KBO coming back and having success the most notable one is Arizona Diamondback stud and Merrill Kelly he has been a consistent hurler that hurler there every fifth day for the past number of years there in Arizona but really broke out during his time in the KBO who's a former Met more like a current Met that has definitely thrived since returning 
returning from the KBO, Brooks Raley. Brooks Raley was initially a field pitcher in the MLB, went over the KBO, comes back, and really finds himself again and really utilizes that arsenal. So you look at these examples and say, hey, while there haven't been too many of them, they're certainly possible. And for a Mets team and a David Stearns, and if you know David Stearns during his time in Milwaukee, was notorious for making these type of sneaky type pickups, whether they're guys coming over from the KBO or just guys in general that you can bring in in a swing role and utilize them in various ways for your rotation. And we know injuries are inevitable. We know that you're still banking on a bit, seeing what you're going to get in Luis Severino. You don't know what you're going to get in Tyler McGill. You still have to see what you're going to get in Jose Buto, even though he did look solid towards the end of the season. Joey Lucchese is solid, but still, again, not a guy you necessarily want in your rotation, even a six man. You want as much MLB quality depth as possible. And Fetty, this is a low risk, high reward type upside move that the Mets would be making here should they go out of their way to land him. He's definitely a guy that we're going to be keeping a close eye on as the Mets, again, reportedly to this point, barring any changes, are a finalist of one of two teams here for the now coveted right-handed starter, swing man, reliever, however he may be utilized. And I think in the case here, if he went to the White Sox, he would 100% be a starter versus a Mets team. I think that there could be maybe a little bit more of a willingness to utilize him as a starter from the beginning should they have a Yamamoto or Imanaga, if not both. But down the stretch, if, say, the rotation gets tighter, can be utilized in that swing role, eating those garbage innings when you need them to the way that Trevor Williams did so well. That is why I do see an appeal here, and that is why I wouldn't be shocked if this happens because David Stearns does like to make these lower-level moves while still prioritizing the big ones at the same time. We know the Mets need arms, so I'm not going to complain there. But of course, when you think of Eric Fetty, his past, his numbers against the Atlanta Braves, numbers against the Mets, numbers against many teams in the NL East are not strong. So you'd have to hope that that one year in the KBO can do him justice and do him better for returning wherever he is going to end up landing. So for Mets fans pessimistic, trust me, I understand. But for Mets fans optimistic, I also understand completely. This is a situation that can be very unique for a Mets team should they land him and kind Kind of take advantage of a guy that, again, just pitch just under 200 innings, around 180. That's still impressive. You need guys to get in eight innings nowadays, and that is not an easy thing to find, especially if you can eat quality innings. In today's free agent market, it is not looking pretty whatsoever. It is a very top-heavy market, and the trade market leaves a bit to be desired on the type of assets you'd have to give up for rental-type players. So when evaluating all these options leads me to the conclusion that should the Mets land Eric Fetty, it does make a level of sense. Whether or not he becomes a batter's box for opposing teams, we will find out next season. But in the meantime, I will welcome him with open arms should they go out of their way to get him if he is going to be a six-man or, say, a swing man in the rotation. If he's the Mets' number four to begin next season, I'm going to have quite a bit of reservations and questions like all of you. So Mets fans, let me know your thoughts down below. As always, as the Mets are a finalist here for Eric Fetty. Do you like this? Do you not like this? However you're feeling, make sure to let me know down below and make sure to smash that like and subscribe button so you too stay tuned for consistent Mets coverage. We'll be back live later tonight around 7.30, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, that being now in December 5th for our second edition of the Winter Meetings Mets Free Agent Frenzy Live Show. Myself and yes, co-host of the Mets Up Podcast, your man, Giraffe Neck Mark. Mark Luino will be co-hosting with me. Cannot wait for that conversation. I hope to hope to see you all again there. Thank you again, folks. And as always, let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.